how do you cook an eggplant curry? Like most recipes with a dozen or more ingredients, it helps to build it in pieces. Ingredients get chunked together into smaller groups so that each group can become a building block to the final dish. This is my rendition of Bagari Bangan, an eggplant curry hailing from Hyderabad, India. There's an aromatic paste consisting of garlic, ginger, turmeric, red chilies, hing, and curry leaf powder. There's also a seed paste made up of pumpkin, sesame, cumin, coriander, and mustard seeds combined with flaked coconut. The pumpkin seeds here are standing in for peanuts to keep this nut free. The two pastes are joined together into a sauce with fresh tomatoes and sour tamarind to make the curry. The first place for me to start though is with the eggplant. Magari Bangan traditionally calls for baby eggplants to be fried in hot oil, but I decided instead to roast big eggplants over an open flame to bring a smoky note to the party. I cut an X pattern into the base of each eggplant and slice them deeply so they're basically four pieces held together by the stem. Then I throw them over the flame of my gas stove top and let the fire rip. The skins will blacken all over and start to flake off as the flesh softens. After about 10 minutes of being rotated on the open flame, the eggplants come off and I set them aside to steam. With the eggplants out of the way, it's time to build the curry. First, I fry the aromatic paste in some hot coconut oil. The water reduces quickly in a big pan like this and starts to thicken and darken after about five minutes. The body of this curry is made with tomatoes, best friend of eggplant and the straw that stirs almost every drink at this time of summer. Here, I've chopped three tomatoes to add them straight into the reduced aromatic paste along with a pinch of salt. These will start to melt into the sauce and deepen their flavor as the tomato liquid reduces and combines with the hot oil and aromatics. I like to let this reduce until it's nearly dry and really intense before I add about a cup of water to loosen it back up into a sauce. Once this is simmering, I add the seed paste. As soon as the seed paste gets added, the whole thing will start to thicken immediately. After it's simmered and the flavors of both pastes have come together with the tomato, it tastes super potent. The curry is now intensely umami from the garlic, tomatoes, and curry leaf, and it's extra rich from the pumpkin seeds and coconut. Here is when I add about a teaspoon of sour tamarind paste to help cut through that intensity and balance things out a bit. At this point, the curry is tasting amazing, and it feels ready to eat. But just when it feels perfect is when I hit it with some extra salt and a little bit of water before I nestle in the fire-roasted eggplants to simmer. Since the eggplants are in season, they'll be picking up a lot of their flavor from the curry, which means it's helpful to have the sauce be a little bit on the saltier side at this stage. And a quick note about the eggplant skins. Generally speaking, you'll want to peel these off before serving since they're tough and kind of unpleasant to eat. Once the eggplants have roasted and sat to steam, the skins come off pretty easily. I'm leaving them on here though to help keep the eggplants from falling apart in the sauce. I let these cook in the simmering curry for about 30 to 45 minutes, adding a splash of water to loosen things up as needed. I'm serving this with some basmati and peas to round out the plate, a dollop of coconut yogurt to help mellow some of the intense umami, and a squirt or two of some thinned out tamarind paste. This is awesome. There's nothing quite like a well-cooked eggplant at the height of summer. It's smoky, tender, and creamy. It's got its own distinct flavor, but at the same time, it's also absorbed the flavors from the curry. This is exactly the plate of food I want in these last dog days of summer. Thanks everybody for coming. I'm gonna see you next time. Bye now.